Hi, I'm Richard, Trails of the City, Footprints of London and Other Places History Tour Guide, and welcome to the seventh and penultimate Trails Live History Cast, my weekly Tuesday evening 6pm broadcast on Facebook during this very difficult coronavirus pandemic lockdown period and in which I'm presenting a different London historic character every week which I've uh, focused on in various walks I've done over the years. And this week's character is Robert Fraser, extraordinary dandy art dealer and proprietor of one of the hippest cultural locations in swinging 60s London, known as Groovy Bob or the man who was handcuffed to Mick Jagger. And I researched into Robert Fraser when putting together my 2016 walk, 1966, the year of swinging London. And uh, it was on the 50th anniversary of Time magazine declaring that London was the epicentre of all that was cool in the cultural and artistic universe. And I didn't just want to focus on Jagger, Townsend, Ray Davis, a rock and roll walk, quite a crowded, although popular field, but also include fashion, football, protests and pop art. And Fraser's Art Gallery in London was at the centre of that blossoming scene. Robert Fraser was born in 1937 to a wealthy self-made banker, Lionel. Incidentally, his grandfather was a butler to Harry Selfridge. He, his upbringing has been described as rather puritanical and humorless and after attending a new uh, scientist school he attended Eton. In the late 1950s he served in the King's Africans Rifles Brigade in Uganda in the dying days of empire. He was second lieutenant to a sergeant major, one young rather nifty boxer by the name of Idi Amin. And with whom Fraser is said to have had a brief fling, but of whom Fraser later said was a bit of a thug. And Mick Jagger uh, said that he got the impression of Fraser's African soldiering experiences of being a, a bit of a lark, a den of vice and iniquity. Well, Fraser's biographer isn't quite sure about that, but perhaps it wasn't entirely serious soldiery. In 1959, uh, Fraser moves to the US, just intending on a short stay, but he becomes appointed assistant to the director of the famous uh, um, art gallery, uh, Carnegie Art Gallery in Pittsburgh, and ends up staying much longer than intended because he finds his life's passion in pop art. And he, through his experiences there, he meets and befriends all the modern American artists such as Jim Dine, Bridget Riley, Patrick Caulfield. His American experiences really cut his teeth in art dealership and give him a lot of experience of putting on major exhibitions. He had a keen eye for art and developed an encyclopedic knowledge of works he saw and artists. He was said not to intellectualise about art, but he just knew what he liked. Now, independently and separately, pop art developed in Britain, partly influenced by Hollywood imagery, advertising, product packaging, pin-ups, but also by uh, a feeling amongst young post-war art student generation that old artistic conventions were all, all out of date and not relevant to their modern lives. And it was to take advantage of that spirit uh, abroad in London that uh, Fraser came here to the English capital and set up a gallery on Duke Street in Mayfair in 1962 and debuted with an exhibition from the French artist Jean Dubuffet of colourful, uh, crazy, graffiti-based figurative art. And his reign as pop art, London pop art proprietor uh, supreme in London and social London magnate had began.
he showed a constant stream of all the greatest artists of that genre of the day. The Americans I've mentioned, but also Jean-Michel Basquiat, Bacon, Richard Hamilton, Peter Blake. And in a round of parties and impromptu gatherings, often drug fueled either at his gallery or his flat in Mount Street in Mayfair, he presided over, perhaps like a 1660s restoration libertine. It, it was said that uh, and he attracted uh, an elite of the great uh, cultural caste, uh, including, uh, as well as the artists, uh, people such as Mick Jagger, uh, Keith Richards, Paul McCartney, uh, William Burroughs, Tony Curtis, it was said that, uh, that uh, Robert Fraser knew everyone and he became known as uh, Groovy Bob. Um, and he was always well turned out, always looking uh, very smart in a suit, but often under the influence of drink or drugs or both. And his attitude to business was somewhat chaotic, or so his biographer noted. For example, in often open, uh, opening late, uh, uh, forgetting for a long time to pay his artists for exhibitions, selling artwork on behalf of colleagues and forgetting to uh, pass on the proceeds. And yet he turned out a sequence of some of the most brilliant and bizarre exhibits in that genre of the day. Uh, for example, Ian Munro's exhibition of 41 fiberglass life-size sheep. Or what about Klaus Oldenburg's series of uh, completely useless, functionally soft objects? For example, the soft typewriter made of plexiglass and vinyl. Or um, the uh, poet uh, and artist uh, Jean Michaud, his scrawlings under the influence of mescaline, which were meant to be a psychological study of the influence of that drug. Uh, and he wasn't afraid to court controversy, to the extent that in September 1966, the police raided his gallery and seized 21 works by the American artist Jim Dine in an exhibition of artwork uh, showing representations of uh, nude parts of the body and charging Fraser under an ancient 19th century uh, vagrancy law for obscenity, which was later downgraded to a conviction for indecency and landing Fraser with a fine. Uh, this was perhaps a shot across the bows, or maybe the police were just out to get him. Uh, but anyway, in February uh, 1967, Keith Richards' Sussex country mansion was uh, invaded by the police to find uh, Jagger, Richards, Robert Fraser and an apparently naked Marianne Faithful wrapped up in a blanket, all clearly under the influence of uh, some illegal substance or other. Richards was charged with using his house as a venue for the consumption of cannabis and Jagger and Fraser were charged with owning 24 heroin pills and uh, Fraser was uh, later convicted and sent to, uh, to prison for, to Wormwood Scrubs for six months. Uh, but before his sentencing, he had the time to art direct the very famous Sgt Pepper's album cover. Talking of the Beatles, many people thought of, at the time, and still do, that Robert Fraser was the influence behind John Lennon's revolver song, Dr. Robert. But that's clearly been disproved in a book which Paul McCartney put out later on you know, that showed it was a, a doctor with a practice in Manhattan. After Fraser's prison sentence in 1968, he, is, he must it seems have been soured by that experience. His heroin addiction worsened and he lost interest in the gallery, closing it in 1969. 
He tried a brief revival in 1983 to 85, but it failed to light any kind of a spark in the 1980s Thatcher's Britain, and he was forced to abandon that after getting sick and being diagnosed HIV positive, the terrible global disease of that era and died in 1986 at the young age of uh, just 49. And no national newspapers carried an obituary. Well, at least later on, uh, an associate, one of his circle, uh, put together a biography in terms of a collection of contemporary reminiscence of his life and times and an exhibition in 2016 was mounted in a gallery in Mayfair, reassembling some of the artworks which adorned his gallery. And that kind of uh, surreal pop art, modern art, you can find all over the Bond Street galleries these days, and often featured in special exhibitions at the Tate, Modern and other places, and it really is big business. But if you go back to the site of Robert Fraser's gallery these days, from 62 to 69 Duke Street in Mayfair, just to the north of Grosvenor Square, just off Oxford Street near Bond Street Station, uh, you will find just a series of rather bland, posh retail outlets, but no plaque or other indication of the, of the great, thriving, uh, cutting-edge and sometimes controversial pop art gallery that uh, it uh, 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 was the venue to, or to its charismatic uh, proprietor, Groovy Bob. Anyway, everyone, thanks very much again uh, for listening. Do leave any more comments. This I'm making my penultimate little broadcast of this series. For the final one, I'm actually going to focus it on a character from a walk that I haven't yet done, but which is all ready to go coronavirus lockdown notwithstanding whenever I can put it on of my actual local area here in Crystal Palace and presenting a character that lived just uh, around the corner from me. So that will be next Tuesday evening. In the meantime everyone do stay safe. I don't know about the government's new safety procedure so I don't know if I can repeat the first word but be safe and healthy and sensible, everyone. Protect the NHS and save lives. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.